Uh, what we're going to do right now is share with you some bits from throughout Mazatlan that we definitely think are noteworthy. Now, some of the things that we're going to share in this video are either uh, little known, often overlooked, almost forgotten about, and some of them actually run the risk of disappearing completely really soon. Having said that, this video includes a local legend, remnants from a bygone era, something which recently lost its world-renowned accolade, and will also take you to Mazatlan's little visited beachfront ruins. Okay, so this is as close as I can get to this particular uh, attraction. So this is an old steamer or a cooker from uh, Pacifico Brewery. Grupo Modelo purchased uh, Pacifico in 1954. This was put onto the Malacan in Mazatlan in the year 2000, and that is to commemorate 100 years of the Pacifico Brewery. This was on the Malacan until at least the year 2014, and shortly after that, from what we understand, the section of this was on was damaged by some sort of tropical storm. And since then, it was moved to the distribution center here on the outskirts of Mazatlan. That's where we're at right now. This isn't the brewery. Uh, the brewery is actually a couple miles down the road, a little bit closer to town. Unfortunately, we can't get any closer to this. Uh, we did see this back in 2014, and this is a bit of a reunion, I guess. We found out where it was actually moved to, and uh, we were very lucky to be able to film this today. Right, so uh, in doing research on this next attraction right here, we, we definitely discovered some interesting information. Much, much more on that later. But uh, first of all, this mural right here is called the Sea of Cortez, and it's by an artist uh, named Ernesto Rios. And this mural is on the side of the Mazatlan International Center. And this is located on Avenida del Delfin on the outskirts of town. So what we're looking at here are 115 plates. Each of these are three meters by five meters. And in total, this is uh, 1,678 square meters. What we found interesting was the amount of misinformation about exactly the superlative of this mural. For example, we've seen online uh, from unofficial sources, this is the largest mural in the world, the largest mural of its kind in the world, whatever that means, uh, the largest mural in the world in linear and uh, single-faced, not sure what that means either. Uh, largest mural of its kind in Latin America. Uh, these are all things about this mural that uh, we couldn't verify. The only thing that we could actually verify was the accolade from Guinness World Records. And uh, there's actual, actually a plaque here, and that is the largest mural by one artist. Sadly, that's not the case anymore. It still seems a lot of people think it is in Mazatlan. And up to this point, that certainly included us. Yeah, yeah, I think we've also read that uh, it was the largest ceramic tile mural in the world, but uh, uh, that's actually Taiwan, the largest ceramic mosaic, and uh, that title actually goes to Hanoi, Vietnam. I think we also heard that it was the largest movable mural uh, in the world. Now, all sorts of uh, uh, claims being put on this. The only verifiable uh, accolade that we can attribute to this, it was at one time recognized by Guinness World Records as the largest mural in the world by one artist, and uh, that was awarded in 2009. However, we couldn't verify the other claims I've just mentioned. We're going to leave a link to Guinness World Record in the description down below, and uh, we're going to link to the current uh, record holder for this category. Largest mural in the world by one artist. And it's also important to note that on the Guinness World Record website, uh, it says that everything that they list on there is current and up to date. Just in case you were wondering, the current title holder for the world's largest mural by one artist is in Bilbao, Spain, according to Guinness World Records. The title of the mural is Miradas Sobre Bilbao, and it's by the artist Jorge Lopez de Jureño. It was actually completed in 2008, but it took 10 years for the Guinness Book of World Records to officially recognize it as the largest mural by one artist. This mural measures 3,595.51 meters squared, so it is significantly bigger than its predecessor here in Mazatlan. 
As it stands, the current title holder in Bilbao is being challenged by a mural on a grain silo in Kansas. Maybe that'll take another 10 years to be officially recognised by Guinness World Records too. Our next uh, lesser known Mazatlan attraction uh, happens to be here at Playa Delfines. The Mazatlan is just to the south of us and uh, we're here to check out this house which has uh, uh, been brought down by by the ocean <laughs> at some point. I'm gonna say maybe two years ago, I'm not sure. This is just testament to uh, the power of the ocean and bad planning and construction. Um, I know this house was standing at least the year 2014 according to Google Maps. Um, so we're gonna take a little tour of this to see what's left. Right, we call this one uh, a ruin with a view, and it's located just north of Mazatlan, about 1.4 miles or 2.25 kilometers north of the Pueblo Bonito Emerald Bay Resort entrance. Or you could use Surf's Up Cafe um, as a landmark, and uh, this site is 0.7 miles or 1.1 kilometers north of Surf's Up Cafe. We actually had to take a cab out here because uh, that's the only, well, it's, it's the only way for us to get out to this spot. And even our driver wasn't sure exactly when the structure started to crumble, but he did say that um, it began crumbling little by little. And as you can see, it's a work in progress. And our cab driver was quite adamant that this particular house wasn't as well thought out as some of the others nearby, and we certainly can't disagree with him on that. And yes, the water looks pretty turbid out there. Uh, we're about uh, two or three days beyond a substantial amount of rainfall here. This was Hurricane Nora that affected Mazatlan, August 29th, 2021. All of this water here is stuff that's, that's come down from the mountains and it's definitely affected the clarity of the water here as you can see. A little added touch of elegance right there. So the future of this house is a mystery. Will it be picked apart by man and disposed of properly? Or will it be picked apart by nature over time and slowly consumed by the sand and or pulled out to sea? Next up on our list of lesser known things to do in Mazatlan is visit the city's uh, now disused bullring. And we're gonna tell you um, a bit of the history what we were able to find out about this place. And we're also gonna tell you about an individual by the name of Eduardo Fontenay, whose name is now associated with this bull ring. And we're gonna tell you his story, his sad story rather, and uh, what happened to him. Today we're taking you on a bit of a tour of the outside of Plaza de Toros Monumental Eduardo Fontenay, which is the bullring here in Mazatlan. Now it's no longer a functioning bullring from what we could find out uh, with our research. The last bullfight that actually happened here was back in 2019. Eduardo Fontenay was a very famous rejoneador and a rejoneador fights the entire bullfight on horseback. Very highly trained horses, very highly skilled horsemanship. So here, back in the day, when they did have bullfights, they had both rejoneos, which is, again, the, the matador on horseback, and they also had the typical bog-standard corrida, which is just a, a, a bullfight where the matador is on the ground. Eduardo Fontenay was killed at Plaza Mexico in Mexico City. Now, he wasn't actually killed by the bull. He was, indirectly. What happened was the bull rammed his horse, and the horse came crashing down on top of him, 
and he was crushed by his own horse. So that happened on the 16th of March 1997 and he died in hospital two days later on the 18th of March. So a little bit of a different ending for a bullfighter than what you would really expect. From what we understand, they, they did hold some other events here, even after the bullfight stopped. But to be honest with you, it doesn't really look like they hold much of anything here these days. Um, I'm not really sure how much longer this will still be around. We can't find out. We, we couldn't find out what year it was built. If you happen to know, if anybody out there knows what year this was built, um, please let us know. Uh, we'd like to know more about it, but there's just there, there really wasn't an awful lot of information online about the bullring here. If you're enjoying the video so far, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And subscribe to our channel because that really helps us out. This is the Miramar and uh, this is the scene of some recent infamous history. February 22nd, 2014 at about 6.30 in the morning. This is where the second arrest of Joaquin Guzman, better known as El Chapo, the former leader of the Sinaloa cartel, was arrested here. Uh, right up on the fourth floor, as a matter of fact. Apparently, the whole thing went down without any real incident. I think he was within custody within maybe a minute. There was a brief scuffle uh, between him, I think it was the Mexican Navy, and a couple agencies from the United States. It all happened right here, right along the Malacan, February 22nd, 2014. In room 403, by the way. So, there you go. The Miramar. This is the Virgin of Guadalupe, also known as Our Lady of Guadalupe, and this is a much, much venerated symbol throughout all of Mexico. So uh, as well, here in Mazatlan, this particular statue is known as the Virgin of La Puntilla, and she has pride of place uh, right down in Mazatlan's port. Now, uh, this is what we've read and heard, so I'm um, not sure the validity of this, but uh, after Hurricane Olivia in 1975, this particular statue appeared in the area. And shortly after that, she was given this pedestal and cleaned up and painted up, and uh, she's been here ever since. To this day, commercial fishermen will stop here and say a prayer, maybe make an offering before heading out to sea for both a safe passage and a bountiful catch. And as well, um, fleets will stop here on the way back. And from what we understand, in the past, crews would stop here again after being out to sea and leave an offering from their catch uh, right at the base or the foot of the statue. I would imagine they don't do that anymore just to keep birds away and to keep the area generally clean. So Our Lady of Guadalupe has a feast day on December 12th, and we would imagine that this spot definitely gets uh, busy with the devout who, are come, who come down here at that particular time. And uh, right around the corner here, um, there's a little uh, spot for offerings uh, or candles. So this spot is definitely uh, used by more than just fishermen, we would say. Um, people probably come here uh, on a daily basis. Regular people just come here to pay their respects to the Virgin of La Puntilla.